Up until this point, we've only assigned cost to our work and our material resources here in the resource sheet view. And you can see that over here in the standard rate column. I mean, all my workers here are at an hourly rate, except for the publisher, he's at a yearly rate. Then, of course, I've got my material resources, and we covered in a previous training video how to enter in the cost resources, how to enter in the cost for the cost resources. Remember, it's a variable rate, and it's on a task per task basis. Where I can assign this resource to any task, they're always going to be at $15 an hour. The travel expense cost, you know, if I'm traveling out to one city in one task to another city in another, it's going to be different per task. So we've got all these three covered. What we haven't covered yet is our budget resources here. In other words, how much we are setting aside for the cost or that we're budgeting for, the work and the material resources. Now each one of these is going to be different in how it tracks. For example, this is going to be in currency, this is going to be in hours, and this is going to be in units. Let's go back up again in currency. How much am I budgeting aside for all my cost resources, which is just one, the travel expense? Let's say, and it's going to be in currency, so let's say it's $2,000. So I go ahead and I'll show you in just a minute how to assign $2,000 to your budget here for your cost resources. So when you uh, start actually accruing your travel expenses, you're at $1,200, $1,300. As long as you're under $2,000, you're fine. If you go over $2,000, I want you to know if you go over any one of these budgets here in project, there's not going to be a red flag. The whole purpose of your budget is to do comparison, is to say, look, I set $2,000 aside for the budget of the cost. You're going to compare that in another view against your actual cost. Say, wow, we're at $2,200 and this says $2,000. I guess we're toast. I better call somebody and get more funding. That's all you're basically doing. For your work, you're going to be budgeting for how many man hours it's going to take to complete the project. You could say 500 man hours. So as you actually start entering in the man hours, I mean you may have estimated 10 man hours for one task, let's say, but let's say the writer, something happens and needs more hours. Well, if you budgeted for 500 here and all of a sudden collectively because everybody's uh, taking more time and it goes over 500 hours, well again no red flag, but that's just for you to compare your 500 versus what actually is being worked on. And it's the same for materials, except materials is going to be in units. Think of it this way, if I have a total of actually five reams of glossy paper assigned to any one of my tasks within the project, and let's say another five for any plain paper, and then I just have one printer, what are the total units that I've assigned for my materials at any time and collectively within my project? 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11 units. So what you're saying here is you're budgeting 11 units or 11 materials aside. Every time you assign one, that takes up one unit until you assign up to 11, or maybe the glossy paper, half of it got shredded in the printer, so we had to purchase another ream, so we're up to 12. Again, in another view I'm going to show you, basically all you're going to do, it just go, oh, now at 11 units or 13 or 12 units, and we budgeted for 11 units. So it's more of an FYI for you to keep track of and not have to open up, let's say, an Excel spreadsheet or another view to be able to compare what you budgeted aside against what's actually coming in or being used up as far as work, materials, and cost, in this case for travel expenses. So the next question is, where do I enter in all my values for my budget resources? And the operative word is values. Again, the value for the cost resource is going to be in currency. For work, it's going to be in hours. And materials, it's going to be in units. Well, remember, this is a resource. And we're going to assign these resources, just like we did all the others, the work, the materials, to a task. Well, what task do I assign my budget resources to? Well, it's going to be the project summary task, because isn't that what you're keeping track of? Is the project the budget for all the materials in the project, for the work and the cost? So that's going to be the first step. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart by right-clicking on my Collapse View Bar, going to the Gantt chart, coming up here, selecting the Project Summary task, which is Task 0, and then coming up here and clicking on the two dudes, the Assigned Resources, or you can do your shortcut key, Alt F10. And there it is, the Budget for Labor, Material, and Miscellaneous or Cost. Go ahead and click and drag and select all three, and then click Assign. They're checked, so they've been assigned and we're finished. Now as a side note, you can't assign anything but budget resources to the project summary task. You can try, select one of the other resources, but you won't be able to assign it. Go ahead and close out. Now that we assign the budget resources to the project summary task, we're going to go to the resource usage view, and that's where we're going to assign the values to those budget resources. So come over here and right click on the collapse view bar and go to the resource usage view.
The whole purpose of the resource usage view, just think of the operative words, resources used. It'll list all the resources, and underneath the resources, any tasks that they're assigned to. So you've got Writer 1, it's assigned three tasks. Writer 2 has none that it's assigned to. And then up above, of course, you have all the tasks that have no resources assigned to it. So to find the budget resources, just go ahead and scroll down until you find them there. And there they are. We have the budget cost resource. I know it's budget miscellaneous, but I've assigned the type cost to it. I can still give it whatever wording I want, just as long as I have the type cost assigned to it. And you can see that in the resource sheet as we just went over. So I have my miscellaneous or cost, my labor, and my materials. Now what task are these budget resources assigned to? Well, again, it's the project summary task. In fact, it's cut off here. If you want to read more about it, you can come up here in the entry bar. There it is, Spiffy Software Training Manual. The project summary task is the goal of our project, and the goal of our project is, again, to create a software training manual. So now that I have my budgets listed here, how do I go ahead and enter in the values for my cost, the labor, and the materials? Well, you cannot enter it in the work field here because it's not work, it's a budget. So let me scroll over. I've got no additional fields. What we need to do is we need to insert those additional fields. I need to insert my budget cost field, which I can enter in the cost for my budget here. And then for the labor or the work and the materials, I can just insert the budget work field. It'll allow me to enter in the hours for the labor and the units for the materials. So first, let's go ahead and insert the budget cost field as a column here. To do that, I'm going to come up here and click on the uh, work column header to select the column. Because what I want to do is I want to insert the budget cost column before the work column. If I wanted to insert it in front of the resource name column, I'd select that. But I'm going to go back to the work column. And you can insert your column one of two ways. Either come up here, click on the insert menu, go down to column. Or you can just go ahead and right click on the column header and go down to insert column. Here it says what field do you want to pull in? Well, you can click on the drop down arrow and scroll forever until you get to the B's. Or just click back on the field here so it collapses and type in BU for budget. Budget cost is what we want to insert. Select it, click OK, and there we go. Now notice here that the zeros are placed right next to the budget cost. This will signify or let you know that you can only enter in in the budget cost column here just for the budget cost resource that's assigned to the uh, project summary task. Okay, Let's go ahead and insert the budget work. Come up here, I'm going to right click on the column header there for work to insert the column so it inserts it before work. Again, the field name is going to be BU for budget and then I'm going to go down to budget work and click OK and there we go. In fact, the split bar, let me click and drag that over a bit so I can also see the uh, work column here. Double click to snap it right next to the work column. Now see if this makes sense. Again, we've got our zeros here. The only zeros that we have or these fields that allow us to enter anything in for the budget cost field is for the budget cost resource. For the budget work, we've got hours for the budget labor, the budget work, and then also reams for the budget material. Now why reams? If you recall, let me right click on the view bar and go back to the resource sheet. My budget material here has the material label as reams. So I'm keeping track of these two materials or setting a budget for those materials. I'm not setting a budget for the printer material. Now you can do this one of two ways. If you want to keep track of all the materials, then I would go ahead and get rid of all the labels here. If you want to keep track of the reams, but also the printer, and maybe you have other materials like pencils, pins, hammers, then you may want to go ahead and come down here and assign a budget for pencils, a budget for pens, and then say a group of pens, like 10 pens to a group, and so on. Just like we have reams for glossy paper, it's 400 sheets per ream. You'll have a little bit more to budget to keep an eye on if you add more budget materials, but if that works for you, go ahead. Otherwise, just go ahead and get rid of all the labels and just have them all under materials. Let me go ahead and right click and go back to the resource usage view on the collapse view bar. Now, if your resources disappear, that means that when you switch views for whatever reason, Microsoft resource usage view likes to scroll down. So what we need to do is come over here and scroll back up till we see our budget resources. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter in the values. Let's say the budget that I've set aside for all my travel expenses or my cost is $2,000. Go ahead and type it in and hit enter. When you type it in next to the task that the resource is assigned to, it'll summarize it up above um, for the resource. So the total budget we've got is $2,000 set aside for the whole project because, again, that's the project summary task.
So let's say for the total hours, again next to the task that the resource is assigned to, let's say 600 man hours we've got budgeted for. And then of course the reams of paper, let's say it's going to be 15, hit enter. And then of course when you're done I would recommend saving your work. Let me go ahead and drag that split bar over just a little bit and double click to snap it back to the work column. And to summarize this, now that we've got our budget cost values entered in and the work, the whole point of this is just to keep track, to look and compare between what you have budgeted and what you actually have listed here. In other words, your budget against your actuals. So I have 600 man hours budgeted for. Let me go ahead and scroll up and let me count up. Let's see, there's four hours for project manager, there's 20 hours for administrative assistant. Let's see, that's 24 hours. Keep adding them up until you can get the total here and then see if you're under 600 hours for your labor. That's a waste of time to go ahead and count up all those hours. Instead, what I recommend is that you go ahead and group by resource type. Anytime you take a view and you group it, it'll give you the total of those groups. So if we group by resource type, remember we have four types of resources. There it is, the reams, the materials. Then we have our labor, our work, which are hours. Then we have our cost somewhere in there here, you know, for our travel expenses. So if we go ahead and group it, it'll give us the total of that group. The total for the group of work, the total hours, wherever that is, it'll give us the total. And then we can just look right next to here, 600 hours, and not have to add it all up. Now there's two ways you can go ahead and group this view. You can either come up here in the project menu and go down to group by, the default's no group, of course. Come down here and say resource type, and I'll show you the second way in just a second, but let's do it this way. And this is great, because look what happens. It now groups it by resource type. Remember I have cost, material, and work. What about the fourth one, budget? Well, because I have a column of field for it, it puts it right there. So first of all, it'll work. It groups all the work resources together and gives us the total of that group, which is 116 hours. All I have to do is look over here and say we got 600 hours budgeted. We're coming within budget. Fantastic. Scroll down. Let's look at our materials. Well, we have 15 reams as our budget, and the total reams that we've used, well, we haven't assigned any yet, so I'm not getting a total here. What about the cost? Well, notice that I've got the resource assigned to review a subject matter expert, but where's the cost here? We have the budget cost, we have the budget work, and we have the work, but what we don't have is the cost field to let us know what cost has been assigned to this task here for our cost expenses. So what I recommend doing is inserting one more column, okay, for your cost. So you can actually not only see your budget, but you can actually see the cost that we expensed when we assigned the uh, cost resource to this task review with subject matter experts. So for example, if I go ahead and I right click on the collapse view bar and go to the Gantt chart, remember review with subject matter experts. Over here, the travel expense is $1,300. Well, when I right click and go back to the resource usage view, again, it scrolls all around. If I scroll down, how come I don't see that money here? we got to insert that cost field. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on work, go down to insert column, type in CO for cost, and then just scroll down just a little ways, select it, click OK, click and drag the split bar over, double click to snap it back, and there it is. So we have $1,300 as the cost, the travel expense for review with subject matter expert, our budget's $2,000, we're within budget so far. Now again, if you go over budget, you're not going to get any red flags or any dancing clowns. It's not going to constrain you from uh, assigning more resources. It's just for you to compare, and that's all. Now a couple things before we close out is, how do I go ahead and ungroup this? Well, notice up here on the taskbar, you see this little arrow? When you hover over it, it gives you that little pop-up, group by. It's grouping by resource type. This was the second way that you can do your groups, or click on the drop-down arrow and say, don't group. When you say no group, you're back to square one. Everything's listed as it's assigned here and to what task. If you want to group it back, again, click on the drop-down arrow and select resource type and you're back to where we were. Next, if I want to get rid of these uh, columns here, you can either right-click on them and go down to hide column and they disappear, or select them and hit the delete key. Now when you hit the delete key, it doesn't delete them, it just hides them. So don't be confused by that because when I right-click and go down to insert column, and again budget or even cost because we deleted that, Scroll down to cost, it's still there. Click OK, it hasn't deleted it. And then click and drag the split bar, and there we go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.